This is a course in miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear. But what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Steady our feet, our Father. Let our doubts be quiet and our holy minds be still and speak to us. We have no words to give to you. We would but listen to your word and make it ours. Lead our practicing as does a father lead a little child along a way he does not understand. Yet does he follow, sure that he is safe because his father leads the way for him. So do we bring our practicing to you. And if we stumble, you will raise us up. If we forget the way, we count upon your sure remembering. We wander off but you will not forget to call us back. Quicken our footsteps now, that we may walk more certainly and quickly unto you. And we accept the word you offer us to unify our practicing as we review the thoughts that you have given us. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. Here is the answer to your search for peace. Here is the key to meaning in a world that seems to make no sense. Here is the way to safety in apparent dangers that appear to threaten you at every turn and bring uncertainty to all your hopes of ever finding quietness and peace. Here are all questions answered. Here, the end of all uncertainty ensured at last. The unforgiving mind is full of fear and offers love no room to be itself, no place where it can spread its wings in peace and soar above the turmoil of the world. The unforgiving mind is sad, without the hope of respite and release from pain. It suffers and abides in misery, peering about in darkness, seeing not, yet certain of the danger lurking there. Each unforgiving mind presents you with an opportunity to teach your own how to forgive itself. Each one awaits release from hell through you and turns to you imploringly for heaven here and now. It has no hope, but you become its hope. And as its hope, do you become your own. The unforgiving mind must learn through your forgiveness that it has been saved from hell. And as you teach salvation, you will learn. 
Yet all your teaching and your learning will be not of you, but of the teacher who was given you to show the way to you. The unforgiving mind does not believe that giving and receiving are the same. Yet we will try to learn today that they are one through practicing forgiveness toward one whom you think of as an enemy and one whom you consider as a friend. And as you learn to see them both as one, we will extend the lesson to yourself and see that their escape included yours. Begin the practice period by thinking of someone you do not like, who seems to irritate you, or to cause regret in you if you should meet him, one you actively despise or merely try to overlook. It does not matter what the form your anger takes. You probably have chosen him already. He will do. Now close your eyes and see him in your mind. And look at him a while. Try to perceive some light in him somewhere. A little gleam which you had never noticed. Try to find some little spark of brightness shining through the ugly picture that you hold of him. Look at this picture till you see a light somewhere within it. And then try to let this light extend until it covers him and makes the picture beautiful and good. Look at this changed perception for a while. And turn your mind to one you call a friend. Try to transfer the light you learned to see around your former enemy to him. Perceive him now as more than friend to you. For in that light, his holiness shows you your savior. Saved and saving. Healed and whole. Then let him offer you the light you see in him and let your enemy and friend unite in blessing you with what you gave. Now are you one with them and they with you. Now have you been forgiven by yourself.
Let us review the meaning of forgive, for it is apt to be distorted and to be perceived as something that entails an unfair sacrifice of righteous wrath, a gift unjustified and undeserved, and a complete denial of the truth. In such a view, forgiveness must be seen as mere eccentric folly, and this course appeared to rest salvation on a whim. This twisted viewpoint but reflects the hold that the idea of sin retains as yet upon your mind as you regard yourself. It is sin's unreality that makes forgiveness natural and wholly sane. A deep relief to those who offer it, a quiet blessing where it is received. It does not countenance illusions, but collects them lightly with a little laugh and gently lays them at the feet of truth. And there they disappear entirely. There is a simple way to find the door to true forgiveness and perceive that it is open wide and welcome. When you feel that you are tempted to accuse someone of sin in any form, do not allow your mind to dwell on what you think he did, for that is self-deception. Ask instead, would I accuse myself of doing this? Thus will you see alternatives for choice in terms that render choosing meaningful and keep your mind as free of guilt and pain as God himself intended it to be and as it is in truth. It is but lies that would condemn. In truth, is innocence the only thing there is? Forgiveness stands between illusions and the truth, between the world you see and that which lies beyond, between the hell of guilt and heaven's gate. Today we practice true forgiveness that the time of joining be no more delayed, for we would meet with our reality in freedom and in peace. Our practicing becomes the footsteps, lighting up the way for all our brothers who will follow us to the reality we share with them. That this may be accomplished, let us ask of the guide who understands the meaning of forgiveness. Let me perceive forgiveness as it is. Then choose one brother as he will direct. And catalog his sins as one by one they cross your mind. Be certain not to dwell on any one of them, but realize that you are using his offenses but to save the world from all ideas of sin. Briefly consider all the evil things you thought of him, and each time ask yourself, would I condemn myself for doing this?
Let him be freed from all the thoughts you had of sin in him. And now you are prepared for freedom. If you have been practicing thus far in willingness and honesty, you will begin to sense a lifting up, a lightening of weight across your chest, a deep and certain feeling of relief. The time remaining should be given to experiencing the escape from all the heavy chains you sought to lay upon your brother, but were laid upon yourself. It seems to be the body that we feel limits our freedom, makes us suffer, and at last puts out our life. Yet, bodies are but symbols for a concrete form of fear. Bodies attack, but minds do not. This is the reason bodies easily become fear's symbols. You have many times been urged to look beyond the body, for its sight presents the symbol of love's enemy Christ's vision does not see. Who sees a brother as a body, sees him as fear's symbol, and he will attack, because what he beholds is his own fear external to himself, poised to attack and howling to unite with him again. This do the body's eyes behold in one whom heaven cherishes, the angel's love, and God created perfect. This is his reality. And in Christ's vision is his loveliness reflected in a form so holy and so beautiful that you could scarce refrain from kneeling at his feet. Yet you will take his hand instead for you are like him in the sight that sees him thus. Attack on him is enemy to you, for you will not perceive that in his hands is your salvation. Ask him but for this, and he will give it to you. Ask him not to symbolize your fear. Would you request that love destroy itself? Or would you have it revealed to you and set you free? Today we practice in a form we have attempted earlier. Your readiness is closer now. And you will come today nearer Christ's vision. If you are intent on reaching it, you will succeed today. And once you have succeeded, you will not be willing to accept the witnesses your body's eyes call forth. What you will see will sing to you of ancient melodies you will remember. You are not forgotten in heaven. Would you not remember it? Select one brother, symbol of the rest, and ask salvation of him. See him first, as clearly as you can, in that same form to which you are accustomed. See his face, his hands, and feet, his clothing, 
Watch him smile. And see familiar gestures which he makes so frequently. Then think of this. What you are seeing now conceals from you the sight of one who can forgive you all your sins, whose sacred hands can take away the nails which pierce your own and lift the crown of thorns which you have placed upon your bleeding head. Ask this of him, that he may set you free. Give me your blessing, holy Son of God. I would behold you with the eyes of Christ and see my perfect sinlessness in you. And he will answer whom you called upon, for he will hear the voice for God in you and answer in your own. Behold him now, whom you have seen as merely flesh and bone, and recognize that Christ has come to you. Today we will attempt to see God's Son. We will not let ourselves be blind to Him. We will not look upon our grievances. So is the scene of the world reversed as we look out toward truth, away from fear. We will select one person you have used as target for your grievances and lay the grievances aside and look at Him. Someone, perhaps, you fear and even hate. Someone you think you love, who angered you. Someone you call a friend, but whom you see as difficult at times or hard to please. Demanding, irritating, or untrue to the ideal he should accept as his, according to the role you set for him. You know the one to choose. His name has crossed your mind already. He will be the one of whom we ask God's Son be shown to you. Through seeing him behind the grievances that you have held against him, you will learn that what lay hidden while you saw him not is there in everyone and can be seen. He who was enemy is more than friend when he is free to take the holy role the Holy Spirit has assigned to him. Let him be Savior unto you today. Such is his role in God your Father's plan. Our practice period today will see him in this role. You will attempt to hold him in your mind. First, as you now consider him. You will review his faults, the difficulties you have had with him, the pain he caused you, his neglect, and all the little and the larger hurts he gave. You will regard his body with its flaws and better points as well. And you will think of his mistakes and even of his sins. Then let us ask of him who knows the Son of God in his reality and truth, that we may look on him a different way and see our Savior shining in the light of true forgiveness given unto us. We ask him in the holy name of God 
and of his Son as holy as himself. Let me behold my Savior in this one you have appointed as the one for me to ask to lead me to the holy light in which he stands, that I may join with him. The body's eyes are closed. And as you think of him who grieved you, let your mind be shown the light in him beyond your grievances. What you have asked for cannot be denied. Your Savior has been waiting long for this. He would be free and make his freedom yours. The Holy Spirit leans from him to you. See no separation in God's Son. And what you see through him will free you both. Be very quiet now and look upon your shining Savior. No dark grievances obscure the sight of him. You have allowed the Holy Spirit to express through him the role God gave him that you might be saved. God thanks you for these quiet times today in which you laid your images aside and looked upon the miracle of love the Holy Spirit showed you in their place. The world and heaven join in thanking you for not one thought of God but must rejoice as you are saved and all the world with you. We ask for rest today and quietness unshaken by the world's appearances. We ask for peace and stillness in the midst of all the turmoil born of clashing dreams. We ask for safety and for happiness, although we seem to look on danger and on sorrow. And we have the thought that will answer our asking with what we request, I rest in God. This thought will bring to you the rest and quiet, peace and stillness, and the safety and the happiness you seek. I rest in God. This thought has power to wake the sleeping truth in you, whose vision sees beyond appearances to that same truth in everyone and everything there is. Here is the end of suffering for all the world and everyone who ever came and yet will come to linger for a while. Here is the thought in which the Son of God is born again to recognize himself. Deep within you is everything that is perfect, ready to radiate through you and out into the world. It will cure all sorrow and pain and fear and loss, because it will heal the mind that thought these things were real and suffered out of its allegiance to them. We understand that you do not believe all this. How could you, when the truth is hidden deep within, under a heavy cloud of insane thoughts, dense and obscuring, yet representing all you see. 
Today, we will make our first real attempt to get past this dark and heavy cloud and to go through it to the light beyond. Sit quietly, with your eyes closed. At the beginning of the practice period, repeat today's idea very slowly. I rest in God. I rest in God. Then make no effort to think of anything. Try instead to get a sense of turning inward past all the idle thoughts of the world. Try to enter very deeply into your own mind, keeping it clear of any thoughts that might divert your attention. From time to time, you may repeat the idea if you find it helpful. But most of all, try to sink down and inward. Away from the world and all the foolish thoughts of the world. Try to sink into your mind. Letting go every kind of interference and intrusion by quietly sinking past them. Your mind cannot be stopped in this unless you choose to stop it. It is merely taking its natural course. Try to observe your passing thoughts without involvement and slip quietly by them. While no particular approach is advocated for this form of exercise, what is needful is a sense of the importance of what you are doing. It's an estimable value to you and an awareness that you are attempting something very holy. Approach it as you would an altar, dedicated in heaven to God the Father and to God the Son. For such is the place you are trying to reach. Listen in deep silence. Be very still and open your mind. Go past all the raucous shrieks and sick imaginings that cover your real thoughts and obscure your eternal link with God. Sink deep into the peace that waits for you beyond the frantic, riotous thoughts and sights and sounds of this insane world. You do not live here. We are trying to reach your real home. We are trying to reach the place where you are truly welcome. We are trying to reach God. It is quite possible to reach God. In fact, it is very easy because it is the most natural thing in the world. You might even say it is the only natural thing in the world. The way will open if you believe that it is possible.
if resistance rises in any form, pause long enough to repeat today's idea. I rest in God. Keeping your eyes closed, unless you are aware of fear. In that case, you will probably find it more reassuring to open your eyes briefly. Try, however, to return to the exercises with eyes closed as soon as possible. Try to reach down into your mind to a place of real safety. You will recognize that you have reached it if you feel a sense of deep peace. Let go all the trivial things that churn and bubble on the surface of your mind and reach down and below them to the kingdom of heaven. There is a place in you where there is perfect peace. There is a place in you where nothing is impossible. There is a place in you where the strength of God abides. There may be some temptation to mistake these attempts for withdrawal, but the difference is easily detected. If you are succeeding, you will feel a deep sense of joy and an increased alertness rather than a feeling of drowsiness and enervation. If you feel yourself slipping off into withdrawal, quickly repeat the idea for today and try again. Simply do this. Be still and lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is. All concepts you have learned about the world, all images you hold about yourself. Empty your mind of everything it thinks is either true or false, or good or bad. Of every thought it judges worthy and all the ideas of which it is ashamed. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past has taught, nor one belief you ever learned before from anything. Forget this world. Forget this course. And come with holy, empty hands unto your God. Heaven itself is reached with empty hands and open minds, which come with nothing to find everything and claim it as their own. Allow peace to flow over you, like a blanket of protection and surety. Let no idle and foolish thoughts enter to disturb the holy mind 
of the Son of God. Such is the kingdom of heaven. Such is the resting place where your Father has placed you forever. Think of yourself as completely at peace with everyone and everything. Safe in a world that protects you and loves you, and that you love in return. Try to feel safety surrounding you, hovering over you and holding you up. Try to believe, however briefly, that nothing can harm you in any way. Very quietly now. Think of your mind as a vast circle, surrounded by a layer of heavy, dark clouds. You can see only the clouds because you seem to be standing outside the circle and quite apart from it. From where you stand, you can see no reason to believe there is a brilliant light hidden by the clouds. The clouds seem to be the only reality. They seem to be all there is to see. Therefore, you do not attempt to go through them and past them, which is the only way in which you could really be convinced of their lack of substance. We will make this attempt today. After you have thought about the importance of what you are trying to do for yourself and the world, try to settle down in perfect stillness, remembering only how much you want to reach the light in you today, now. Determine to go past the clouds. Reach out and touch them in your mind. Brush them aside with your hand. Feel them resting on your cheeks and forehead and eyelids as you go through them. Go on. Clouds cannot stop you. If you are doing the exercises properly, you will begin to feel a sense of being lifted up and carried ahead. You should experience some sense of relaxation and even a feeling that you are approaching, if not actually entering, into light. Try to think of light, formless and without limit as you pass by the thoughts of this world. And do not forget that they cannot hold you to the world unless you give them the power to do so. Your little effort and small determination call on the power of the universe to help you, and God himself will raise you from darkness into light. You are in accord with his will. Try to remember that you are at last joining your will to God's. Try to keep the thought clearly in mind that what you undertake with God must succeed. Then let the power of God work in you and through you, that his will and yours 
be done. There is a light in you which cannot die, whose presence is so holy that the world is sanctified because of you. All things that live bring gifts to you and offer them in gratitude and gladness at your feet. The light in you is what the universe longs to behold. All living things are still before you, for they recognize who walks with you. There is a silence into which the world cannot intrude. There is an ancient peace you carry in your heart and have not lost. There is a sense of holiness in you the thought of sin has never touched. All this, today, you will remember. The light has come. You are healed and you can heal. The light has come. You are saved and you can save. You are at peace and you bring peace with you wherever you go. Darkness and turmoil and death have disappeared. The light has come. The peace of God is shining in you now and from your heart extends around the world it pauses to caress each living thing and leaves a blessing with it that remains forever and forever. What it gives must be eternal. It removes all thoughts of the ephemeral and valueless. It brings renewal to all tired hearts and lights all vision as it passes by. All of its gifts are given everyone and everyone unites in giving thanks to you who give and you who have received this is the day of peace you rest in God. And while the world is torn by winds of hate, your rest remains completely undisturbed. In him you have no cares and no concerns. No burdens, no anxiety, no pain, no fear of future and no past regrets. In timelessness, you rest, while time goes by without its touch upon you. For your rest can never change in any way at all.
Today the lights of heaven bend to you, to shine upon your eyelids as you rest beyond the world of darkness. Here is light your eyes cannot behold, and yet your mind can see it plainly and can understand. A day of grace is given you today, and we give thanks. When a mind has only light, it knows only light. Its own radiance shines all around it and extends out into the darkness of other minds, transforming them into majesty. The still infinity of endless peace surrounds you gently in its soft embrace. So strong and quiet, tranquil in the might of its creator, nothing can intrude upon the sacred Son of God within. The truth in you remains as radiant as a star, as pure as light, as innocent as love itself. The memory of God is shimmering across the wide horizons of our minds. A moment more, and it will rise again. A moment more, and we who are God's sons are safely home, where he would have us be. is their silence all around the world. Now is their stillness, where before there was a frantic rush of thoughts that made no sense. Now is their tranquil light across the face of earth, made quiet in a dreamless sleep. And now the word of God alone remains upon it. Only that can be perceived an instant longer. Then are symbols done, and everything you ever thought you made completely vanished from the mind that God forever knows to be his only son. The sun is still, and in the quiet God has given him, enters his home, and is at peace at last. <laughs> 